Times are tough, but affording the essential shouldn't be. That's why I shop at Publix for weekly budget-friendly deals. Create delicious meals your entire family will love for under $15. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. October 11th, 1984. I've been trying to get a good listen to this bird for quite some time. Just up ahead is what I think is a common loon. I'm going to try to get a closer listen. Let me see if I can get just a little closer here. Stay tuned. Yes, there. Just there. Let's see if I can get her song. Now, if these goddamn cicadas will just turn it down a bit. There. There it was again. I'm going to stand up here and see if I can see her. This is getting frustrating. Darkness is setting in now. I'm going to get one good look at her. Just let me just... That summer, I hunted the serial killer at night from my daughter's playroom. For the most part, I mimicked the bedtime routine of a normal person. Teeth brushed, pajamas on. But after my husband and daughter fell asleep, I'd retreat to my makeshift workspace and boot up my laptop, that 15-inch wide hatch of endless possibilities. Our neighborhood northwest of downtown Los Angeles is remarkably quiet at night. Sometimes, the only sound was the click as I tapped even closer down the driveways of men I didn't know using Google Street View. I rarely moved, but I leaped decades with a few keystrokes, yearbooks, marriage certificates, mug shots. I scoured thousands of pages of 1970s-era police files. I pored over autopsy reports that I should do this surrounded by a half-dozen stuffed animals and a set of miniature pink bongos didn't strike me as unusual. I'd found my searching place, as private as a rat's maze. Every obsession needs a room of its own. Mine was strewn with coloring paper on which I'd scribbled down California penal codes in crayon. It was around midnight on July 3, 2012, when I opened a document I'd compiled listing all of the unique items he'd stolen over the years. I'd bolded a little over half the list. Dead ends. The next item to search for was a pair of cufflinks taken in Stockton in September 1977. At that time, the Golden State Killer, as I'd come to call him, hadn't yet graduated to murder. He was a serial rapist, known as the East Area Rapist, who was attacking women and girls in their bedrooms, first in East Sacramento County, then snaking out to communities in the Central Valley and around San Francisco's East Bay. He was young, anywhere from 18 to 30, Caucasian and athletic, capable of eluding capture by vaulting tall fences. A single-story house second from the corner in a quiet, middle-class neighborhood was his preferred target. He always wore a mask. 